situation. All of us are in the second situation. We don't know when the bomb is going to go off. But the problem is we're not, we're heedless of it. We're not as um, upfront and as, as busy as we should be because we're in that second situation. We don't actually realize what's actually happening. And that's an example that you should be thinking about. Yeah, imagine this, brothers, here. Yeah? Imagine I pushed one of you guys off Kennery Wharf here. Yeah? And like, there's maybe like what, 50, 60 floors here. Yeah? You go past like the 40th floor and you're like, oh, I've got 40 more floors to go, man. Imagine you pull out a napkin, put it in your neck, get your cufflinks on, get a knife and fork, fork out of your pocket here, yeah? and you start getting ready to eat. Are you going to do that? Yeah? No, because you know you're going to hit the floor, isn't it? You, you know you're going to hit the floor. You're going to prepare yourself for your landing, isn't it? But this is what Muslims and some even like to a, non-Muslims, but to a certain extent, Muslims are doing. We've already been pushed off the. The moment you were born, you're pushed off the building. But we're getting ready, isn't it? We're trying to put, gel our hair up, yeah, put on some Nivea, yeah, trying to look nice for what? For the fall, yeah. I tell you when you're going to look like. You're going to look like. You know that guy. He just smashed tomatoes in that film, whatever. Yeah, you're gonna look like that, basically. Yeah, that's how you're gonna look like. Yeah. So what are you preparing for, isn't it? Are you preparing for the landing, or are you, you know, being superficial? So that's one of the things that you really need to understand about this New Year's thing. Yeah, what is the implications actually behind it? Yeah, and you know, all of these people when they set our resolutions, yeah. Mm -hmm. Brothers, brother Lutfu might say, you know what, I'm going to get a better job, man. These brothers in the hotel, they're not treating me properly, man. Yeah, I'm gonna get, I want to get a pay rise, man, paying me four pounds something an hour, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving, yeah. Some other brothers might do something else, isn't it? I'm going to try to do all of these things. But we make all of these preparations, yeah. We make all of these preparations. But one of the most fundamental things that people miss out on is what? Is on the inevitable, which is today's discussion. Yeah, people actually miss out on the reality, on the reality. <coughs> People don't actually think about death. And you know in the Quran there's a surah called um, the reality. Anyone know what it's called? Surah al haqqa i.e. the reality. Yeah? And you know the most common theme within that surah is what? Death. The most concurrent theme within that surah of al haqqa is death. I.e. that's the reality. But people actually miss that most fundamental point out. And now, brothers, I'm just going to explain to you actually the importance of such an issue, yeah? Of why forgetting about death is detrimental to a Muslim. Yeah, detrimental, yeah? And I'm going to enlighten you, brothers, with the story yeah, of the <coughs> brother with the three wives, yeah? Now, I see a lot of smiles coming up on your brothers, yeah? Yeah, three wives, yeah, but this is what I'm going to enlighten you on this story, inshallah, yeah. And he's, inshallah, I'm going to demonstrate what my point is, yeah. Now, this brother, yeah, he had three wives. His first wife, he used to be passionately in love with her, yeah. Like a Romeo and Juliet film that younger brothers know about, yeah. That the, what they're trying to replicate in their lifestyle, basically, yeah. So this guy, he used to love his first wife, yeah. Every time this brother would come home, yeah, he would ask his wife, you know, what do you need? What do you want me to do? Yeah, yes sir, yes sir, three bags full sir. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I'll do anything, please, yeah. And never, whenever he would make a decision, yeah, whenever he would make a decision, he would always take her into consideration, yeah. Whenever, um, whatever she wanted, basically, he would give her a call, he would always take her feelings into consideration, yeah. Never will a second go past, yeah, never will a second go past, yeah, where he would dis her, discomfort her or put her in an awkward situation. Yeah, he would treat her like a princess. Yeah, he would walk her everywhere, would take her everywhere. Yeah, the proper flash style yeah, treatment. Yeah, that's his first wife. Now with his second wife, brothers, yeah, he used to like her, but he never used to love her. He used to like her. Yeah, at some points in his decisions and in his career, he would ask her for her decisions. He would ask her for her thoughts, yeah, ask her for her compliments. Sometimes when he's going out, he'll be like, okay, I can do this, but I can't do that. I can take you here, but I can't take you there. You know, he'll take her, sometimes he would look after her, sometimes he wouldn't. Yeah? Sometimes he'd bring her food, sometimes he would just forget about her. Yeah? And this is how his relationship was with his second wife. Yeah? Now the third wife, brothers, yeah, he had his third wife. And with the third wife, brothers, yeah, and I want to, I want you guys to actually imagine this here. I want you to imagine, brothers, yeah, you being in this relationship, yeah, or your parents having the relationship of the 
brother and his third wife. With his third wife, brothers here, he wouldn't care about her. He'd hate her. Never in his life, when he made a decision, would he care about her, would he take into consideration. Yeah? She, he would always scowl at her, discourage her, shout at her, yeah? make mockery out of her. Never really come to her home at night, yeah? never really take her things into consideration. Imagine how disheartened she must have felt. Yeah? She didn't like, she, I mean, he, he would tell her straight in, his fa in her face yeah, that I don't like you, yeah? I don't know why I'm in this relationship with you. This was the detrimental relationship that he had, yeah? SubhanAllah with his third wife. But brothers, what's the importance for us from taking from this knowledge of this story? You know, who's that brother I'm talking about? That brother is all of us. But for us, who is our first wife? Our first wife is the dunya. We cater for her, we love her. Every time we want to do something, we're always asking the dunya about what she wants. We're always looking into what she wants. All of these things here, yeah, we're lapping up the dunya. Yeah? We'll do anything just to please her. Isn't it? This is our example. But the story doesn't finish there. With the brother, the angel of death approached him. And the angel of death said, look, it's your time. So he quickly ran to his first wife and he said, you know, will you come into the grave with me? She looked at him and said, you joker, move from my face before I slap you, bro. Yeah? <laughs> what kind of joke are you, yeah? I was like, what, you want me to come into the grave with you? Said, You're on your ones. He's like, after all of that affection, you know, you're going to come into the grave with me, man. <coughs> he went to his second wife. He's like, look, I know I haven't been as nice to you as I should have been. But I have taken you into consideration in some occasions. I know I ain't been the best husband, but you know I've tried to fulfill my minimum. Yeah, kind of will you come into the grave with me? She comes up with, the all I'll do is come to the grave with you. I'm not going to come into the grave in your grave with you, but I'll come to the grave that you just bid you farewell. That's all I'll do. He went to his third wife and he said, Subhanallah, I've neglected you all my life. Yeah, I haven't taken I haven't taken care of you. I haven't taken you into consideration. Yeah, I've been the worst husband to you. But I feel like an idiot asking you right now. Will you come into the grave with me? And what was her response? She comes over with, Wallahi, I'll always come into the grave with you. I'll always come into the grave with you. But going back and reflecting on the story, brothers, you know, I already mentioned that the first wife was the dunya. That we lap her up so much, we take her into consideration, we're so affectionate about the dunya. That when death comes, is the dunya going to come to you with the graves, brothers? Yeah, that's a rhetorical question, by the way, yeah? <laughs> but, do you see, brothers, yeah? The dunya is not going to come to the grave with you. Yeah, you can comfort her, you can do all of these things you want. The dunya is not going to come to the grave with you. Who is our second wife? Yeah? It's our family. Yeah? We sometimes take her into consideration, yeah? And we sometimes don't. We sometimes look after her, we sometimes don't. And all of the things we can do with them, yeah? We can always make our relationship better with our family. But at the end of the day, where is your family only going to go with you? To the cupboard, isn't it? Only to the graveyard to bid you farewell. But brothers, the most important question is, who is the third wife? The third wife is, brothers, your nafsiya. You neglect your nafsiya your whole life. Yeah? You neglect yourself. Yeah? You don't, you don't, you, in terms of enjoying the good and forbidding the evil, you leave it apart. In terms of enjoying the halal, you, you, you stay, you don't do it. In staying in, in the prohibitions of Allah, <coughs> Allah you run towards it. In terms of catering for it, in terms of Quran, and nurturing your nafsiya and your tahajjud, and all of these salah elements, you neglect it. You neglect your nafs, and what's the only thing that's going to go with you to you on the grave? It's your third wife, it's your nafsiya. And that's the importance, brothers, of thinking about death and thinking about preparation of what you're making for yourself. Yeah? And that's the key thing that we really need to think about. What are we actually trying to achieve? Yeah? And we know, brothers, yeah, that at the end of the day, once we pass away, brothers, yeah, there will be a recompense, isn't it? We know that there will be a recompense. There will be uh, accountability for our actions, isn't it? So today's discussion when we're having the talk about check yourself before you wreck yourself, what are we trying to discuss? We're trying to say, look brothers, you need to check yourselves yeah, before you fall into the pitfalls.